Now we've got two speakers left. And I don't know about you, I didn't run this by Christine because I'm kind of rogue. You guys, anybody who knows me knows I'm a little rogue. I'm a radio talk show guy. Um, but I think after our, after our next two speakers, what do you guys say we just storm the state house and chant no more taxes? I mean, they're there anyway, and we're here anyway, and there's no reason why they shouldn't hear what we have to say, because we are the people. Our next speaker, Jessica Vaughn. <laughs> hey, we do own that house, thank you. You know, uh, one, one of my mentors in this business, whenever I'm not sure what to do, I always look to see what State Representative from Andover, Jim Lyons, has to say. I'm going to just a change in program, sorry. Um, we're going to start with Aaron Goldstein. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you had someplace. Um, Aaron Goldstein, I was actually fortunate enough to see him last year in Worcester. He spoke at the Worcester Tea Party, did a great job. Uh, Aaron began his political life as a socialist. Oh? But following the attacks of September 11th, he gradually began to embrace the wisdom of conservatism. He uses his poetic license, which I understand has been suspended from time to time, to write about politics, music, clam chowder, anything else that he damn well pleases. He was born in Canada, and Aaron has lived in Boston for over a decade, and he is a true Tea Party patriot. Let's give him a Tea Party welcome for Aaron Goldstein. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm certainly delighted to be here today. I want to thank the Greater Boston Tea Party for inviting me to speak with you once again. As was just said, I had the opportunity to address the Tax Day Rally last year in Worcester. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I am a regular contributor to the American Spectator, and you can find my uh, articles and blog posts at spectator.org, and uh, you won't be disappointed. Now, I know we're all having a good time this afternoon, and I hate to be a buzzkill, but i got to be blunt. It's been a long, tough year for the Tea Party. Since last year's rally, the Supreme Court upheld Obamacare, and President Obama was re-elected. Hey, how do you think I feel? Now, I don't know if you remember this, but President Obama said that Obamacare wouldn't raise the deficit by a dime. Well, Obama has increased the deficit by enough dimes to fill Boston Common. And with the budget that Obama announced the other day, you can add nearly four quadrillion dimes to the pile. President Obama doesn't give a dime about the deficit. How could he? Obama says that a $17 trillion deficit isn't a crisis. If a $17 trillion deficit isn't a crisis, then what is? $20 trillion? $25 trillion? $30 trillion? $50 trillion? $100 trillion? Where does it end? Now, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a little highway sign to the left of this stage, and it reads, Debt Crisis Ahead. It's here now. And yet, the people believed Obama. It just goes to show that some of the people can be fooled all of the time. Why, it's enough to make my mustache curl. Unfortunately, Republicans aren't much better. Recently, House Speaker John Boehner agreed with President Obama in saying that the deficit wasn't a crisis. Not only that, but he said that he absolutely trusts President Obama. Now let me get this straight here. This is the same President Obama who started the sequester and spent weeks repeatedly blaming Boehner and Republicans for it. Now let me ask you guys a couple questions. Do any of you think the deficit isn't a crisis? No. Do any of you absolutely trust President Obama? No. I didn't think so. But as long as we have Republicans who think the deficit isn't a crisis and absolutely trust President Obama, we have a serious problem and it isn't going to go away anytime soon. And as long as it isn't going away, 
we have to ask ourselves where this leaves the next generation. Now, given all the setbacks of the past year, it's easy to say that we get the government we deserve. But that would be wrong. It would be wrong because the next generation has to live with the consequences of last November's vote. Now, I know a few people, a few speakers mentioned her name earlier, but I, I, I think it's bare, bare, it's worth repeating. Mar as Margaret Thatcher so wisely put it, the problem with socialism is that you run out of other people's money. And at the rate President Obama, Congress, Governor Patrick, and others are spending our money, there might not be any money for the next generation to call their own. So, what do we do? The best way we can unburden the next generation is by passing on the knowledge necessary for them to tell our leaders to stop. Stop spending money you don't have. Stop borrowing money you know you can't pay back. Stop mortgaging our future. Stop doing for us what we can do for ourselves. Now, I won't leave you with any illusions. This will not be an easy fight. If younger people rise up against irresponsible government spending, our leaders will do their best to ignore you. If that doesn't work, they will do their best to mock you. And if that doesn't work, they will do their best to accuse you of racism and other acts of intolerance. When those things happen, and they surely will, all I can tell the next generation is, don't stop. If the next generation is undeterred from telling our leaders to stop spending our money, it will be because you have got their attention. In other words, don't stop telling our leaders to stop spending our money. Don't stop telling our leaders to stop spending your money. And if the next generation doesn't stop telling our leaders to stop, then and only then will our leaders start to listen. Thank you for your time. Come on, Aaron Goldstein. You know, it was just pointed out to me by somebody that, um, I put my cigarette out. They're going up on our cigarette taxes, by the way. You'll, you'll notice that when they go up on the cigarette taxes, they say, oh, we're going to only use the money for poor people who have emphysema, so we have to raise the cigarette. And then they take it and they raid that money and they blow it, like they blow everything else. And that's why we're all against taxes in general, isn't it? So it occurred, uh, uh, someone just uh, said to me a few seconds ago, you'll notice that this is the first Tea Party rally that we've ever had, where there were no protesters, no booze, no Occupy, nobody standing up and trying to shut us down. And so you guys ought to give yourselves a round of applause for being one of the best audiences we've had on this Coleman ever.